That one does not like fireworks since she kept us up all night last night. And that was the third, so. You gonna be good on the fourth? We're not gonna sleep tonight. Little parade set up here on the fourth going down. Um, pretty cool, it's kind of right outside the apartment complex. Little vintage fire truck for you. I, apparently there's gonna be a parade. They're gonna set up a bunch of street vendors. It's only here for about four hours. Doesn't look very far along, but it's supposed to start in two hours, so we'll see. Let's uh, fast forward. Oh yeah. Red, white, and blue. Let's go hit it. I actually have no idea what we're hitting, but the parade starts. Let's go outside. How much do you love 4th of July? You don't like any of this, huh? Beautiful day here on the 4th of July. Definitely the clouds burned off. So what we're taking a look at today is the Canon RF2 EF lens adapter with the drop-in ND filter. I don't have the polarizer and I definitely did not buy the clear filter replacement that you can put inside of here. The Canon did come with a free adapter without anything built into it. So we also have that to compare it with. With that, let's go ahead and dive in. What do I love about this? What do I hate about it? Would I recommend it? Let's find out. So right now we're in pretty bright daylight and one thing I wanna call out I really like about this is how variable the ND filter is. It goes all the way from 1.5 to nine stops. Right now we're shooting in really bright daylight. I'm on shutter speed one over 60 at F2.8 and you can actually see we'll go all the way dark nine stops i mean you can't see anything and then all the way bright just to show you how much light it's really letting in and the only times i found i had to take the filter out was when you're shooting in low light because 1.5 stops is going to affect it you're going to have to turn up your iso in those situations i've been putting in the adapter that has no filter or just taking it out and leaving a gap in the lens i can't see myself paying 127 dollars for a clear adapter when it shouldn't be needed in the first place or they should have just included it Really good spot for healthy food here in Venice. Um, Firehouse, it's on Main and Rose. Uh, really big fan of them. They've got good drinks, good healthy food. I'm gonna stop in here for a quick bite and then we'll continue talking about the ND filter. I wanted to get one thing. Thank you. Quick pace stop, 4th of July. All right, so we got refueled. We got some drinks for later during the fireworks. Gonna head down to the park right now, try some long exposures during the daytime with this ND filter out. I think we'll be around seven to nine stops. We'll try out a few different ones on both the fountains we have down here. So there's kind of a waterfall one and one shooting water out of the ground. See how it does. See you guys there. Headed to the next spot, next fountain down here, shooting water out of the ground. First one seemed to do pretty well, and then after that we'll head down to the beach, try the ocean. Gonna be really bright, but we'll see. All right, so what we learned is it seems like in bright daylight right now, you're not gonna get much brighter than this. You've got water, it's reflecting the light right into it. You can only go about one second on all the way, I'd say about uh, ND8 to ND9. And we'll notice, I'll show you some photos now. So ND9 is just super blue. As soon as you twist it the slightest little bit, it's actually gonna get rid of a lot of that blue. Uh, so about one second exposure seems to be perfect. It smoothed out the water well. Let's take a look at a two second exposure just for reference. This is basically ND9 and then ND8.5. Uh, overall, really happy. I think it does a good job. Just don't use nine. As long as you avoid that and you twist it just the tiniest little bit, 
you should be good to go. Let's head down to the beach now. We'll try some things out with the ocean and then head back to the studio, take a look at the physical device. And also I wanna talk about the things I don't like about this. So in addition to smoothing out water, another thing to keep in mind that you can do with daytime long exposures is get rid of people. So if you're in a crowded area and there's just a few people walking around, they might be in your shot. When you do that long exposure, they're gonna blur and basically just not be in the photo. So when you're in a crowded area, Now, I'm not gonna be able to get rid of all those people, but it does help if you have you know, one or two people that are kind of walking through your scene. When we were at that waterfall back there, uh, we actually had a few people and you probably won't even see them in those photos. So what I wanted to show you guys there was that don't just think water when you're doing long exposures, really anything with movement. And during the day, it's gonna look really cool because people are gonna wonder how you got that type of shot. So just think creatively, this ND filter definitely allows it. You can notice too, there's not really any bad vignetting, which is usually a big downside. So the fact they charge $400, yes, it's a lot, but it's a really good ND filter. So let's go back to the studio now. I'll talk about what I don't like. See you there. All right, so now we're back in the studio and I wanna run through some of the things that I don't like about this ND filter real quick. Things you should definitely be aware of as you're using this. First and foremost is just how little resistance there is. So when you actually spin the ND filter, it's incredibly easy. There's no resistance whatsoever. The problem with this is that, especially when you're vlogging, when you're moving around, you know, the focal ring is right here. So as you're twisting things, there's many times I'm simply just bumping it whether I'm filming, whether I'm between scenes, and all of a sudden it's completely changed my settings on the ND filter. It would have been really nice if they did something like just had a way to lock it in so I can set it to whatever stop I want it to be at and then just lock it, or if it just had some more resistance. Um, it's very easy to twist, so something to be aware of. You can get around it, but I do find myself constantly knocking it out of place, sometimes when I'm filming, unfortunately, other times when I'm not filming. Next up, and this might be my biggest complaint, I kind of mentioned this earlier on in the video, when you take this out, right? So we walked from outdoors to indoors now, and so we don't want the 1.5 stops this is gonna produce. We've got a gap in the lens. So we can get dust, we can get dirt, and more importantly, light can come in and kind of ruin your shot. It's $127 to buy the clear filter for it. It has a piece of glass inside of it. I have no idea why, because at the end of the day, the EF to RF one that comes with it, that's $100, has no glass inside of it. So all you really need to do is weather seal it, block out light. It should have been a five to $20 adapter. Really bugs me they didn't include an adapter to cover this up just for free when you spend $400 in the first place on something like this. It is nice you have the other adapter, but now you're constantly swapping things. It gives you room again to get things dirty, to drop them, damage them. $127 is outrageous for a piece of glass just so you can have this attached to your camera and not let in particles. So my last complaint now, and this is super minor, is the fact that the case that comes with this doesn't have any type of belt strap or neck strap that you can hook onto it. That would have been really nice, especially since we're gonna probably be swapping these so that way if I don't need the ND filter, I'm gonna put on the regular adapter there's no way to attach this. So this is just gonna kind of be loose in your bag. Something to be aware of, again, incredibly minor, but the fact that they're gonna include this, I can't imagine it would have cost them that much more to put a belt strap on here. That way you've got it on your waist. If you need to swap these adapters out, you're fine. It's very easy to do. One thing I do wanna call out that was kind of cool, when you take this out and you leave the gap inside of the camera, I've had times where I've noticed if you let some light shine directly into it, it kind of gives you that hazy, blurry look. So it's kind of a little hack there. If you wanna give that kind of soft uh, haze to your photos, to your videos, you can actually take this out and leaving that gap inside of it lets in some light between your lens and your actual sensor, and it does give you a cool effect that you can mess with. So if you have this already and you haven't tried that, check it out. It was kind of cool, but again, just something to be aware of. So at the end of the day, is this worth it? Would I recommend it for $400? If you have a lot of EF glass, yes, I think so. Because ultimately you don't have to worry about the thread size or the front lens on your camera. It's gonna fit in between, it's gonna be protected. The 1.5 to nine stops is a big variation. The fact that you really don't get hard vignetting, it's not an uneasy image. I'm really happy with actual quality out of the ND filter. 
The biggest complaints we talked about are minor downsides to some extent. I think, again, the $127 clear filter is the biggest downside for me with this. I wish there would have just been a way to cover this for 20 bucks. So if you're thinking about getting it, I would push you towards getting it. I think it could have been a lot worse in a lot of ways, and they did a very good job with this adapter. The other thing to be aware of I've been thinking about is the fact that I want to start getting RF glass. This is my only EF lens. As soon as I do that, this adapter becomes moot. So I'll probably end up selling it once the 15 to 35 comes out on the RF. I'll probably have to go with the front adapter anyway. But uh, if you do have EF glass, if it's something you know you're going to use a lot, 400 bucks honestly I think is worth it in this scenario. So that's it, guys. Let's take a look at some fireworks outside now. We'll go have some fun, wrap up today's vlog. Happy 4th of July. I'll see you guys tomorrow. We've got some cool stuff planned this weekend. I actually can't tell you what it is, but you'll find out shortly. See you guys.